do you create an audio playlist in Divi? I'll show you how to do it. My name is Michelle and I release videos on marketing websites and all things design. So if you find this information helpful, please be sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you like these kind of tutorials. Now today's video is actually a viewer request. They were having a little trouble creating an audio playlist in Divi and I was happy to help out. Which brings up a great point. If there's something specific out there that any of you'd like to see, you can always leave a comment on any of my videos or send me an email. I can't always guarantee that I will make a tutorial for every request, but I will do the best where I can. So if you're ready to take a look at what we're building today, let's dive in. Here is a quick look at what we will be building today. So what I have, just a simple image on the left, don't really need to pay much attention to that, but this is really on the right side. What we're focusing on today is just building an audio playlist. So how would this function? We've got the title of potentially a track and we've got some toggle information where you could have some information about the song or you could even put the lyrics in there. And then we've got a play button next to the song so that when we click it, you can start to hear the music. And then if we click the pause button again, it will stop. So what will be required for this is a plugin to include the audio play and stop button. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a fancy configuration to get the play button to sit right beside our toggle module here. So let's get started in building this. So I'm starting this example with a blank page. I don't actually wanna use a regular section for this. In order to get this to work the way that I want it to, I'm going to use a specialty section. I don't use these a lot, but sometimes they do come in handy. So the one that I'm choosing here is two, essentially two columns. So we've got the larger column on the left-hand side, and then we've got the right hand side that we can have a little bit more fun with. So I'm gonna choose this option here and then I will just get rid of the default row that was there when I started. So if I wanted to, you know, trying to think of use cases for this, you know, why would you have an audio playlist? So, you know, you might wanna preview an album, which you could definitely do and have clips of songs or you could even put your full album on there. You could probably use this technique for podcasts. I'm just gonna add a quick image here so on our left-hand side. And you know, you could do a lot of different things. You could even use it sort of in an educational way. So if you were doing audio lessons and you needed to stack you know, a play button and have some information next to it, that might be another use case. I'm sure that you guys will probably have many other options that you could use this for, but some of the techniques, at least the stacking techniques, which I have showcased before on my channel, are pretty handy when you're trying to come up with things like this. So we've got our image on the left-hand side. We're gonna add a single column row on this side, and then I'm gonna start with a text module. And the reason that I'm gonna start with the text module is because I want to incorporate, I'm gonna choose the text module, I wanna incorporate a short code for the plugin that we're gonna be using. So the plugin that we're gonna be using is actually called Compact WP Audio Player. I will leave a link for this in the description so you can find it pretty easily. But what this is, is just the play button and then you'll see how to use it. So if you see the example short code that you have, they just have the SC embed player and then you put the URL to your file. So you could upload an MP3 to your media gallery and then you can use that. So let me go copy the MP3 from my media gallery and then we're gonna paste it in as a short code. Okay, so here is where my regular content for my text module goes. I'm gonna paste in my short code. And so just as I showed you before, it's just that SC underscore embed underscore player. And then you've got your file URL. And so I just pasted the URL of the MP3 file that I loaded into my media gallery. So very simple to use. I'm gonna hit save on that. And then you can see we've got this default button image and it's pretty small too. It looks a little fuzzy. So I don't actually love the way that that button looks. You can definitely use it out of the box as is, and that is completely fine. But if you do wanna style it, I've got some secret CSS that I will show you on how to override 
its current settings and you could use your own images for the play and the pause button. So moving on, we've got our button there. Let's add our toggle module. We'll find it there. And then we can see that really this would be up to you. So this could be, you know, like track number. We'll just put this title as a kind of a dummy title. It'll say track number one by artist. So you could do any kind of content that you wanted there. If it was the name of a lesson, if it was the name of a podcast or a preview of a song, whatever you want. And then you have the option to insert your content in the paragraph area so that when you do drop down, you can see the extra information. So let's style this a little bit because you do have a lot of options when using a toggle module. So for example, let's go to the design tab and then let's start with the icon because you have a closed icon and an open icon and you can also determine the colors of that. So if I wanted to change this to all dark and then have my icons be white so we can start to do those items there. And so when it's closed, we might say, you know, we could use an expand option and then we could choose our open icon. We can do that as the up arrow there so that when we click that, it flips. Let's take a look at that color too. Let's change the background dark so that we can start to see these. Let's open up the toggle tab and then change some of these background colors. So if we wanted it to just be black, both the open and the close, we could make those adjustments there for the text, like at least the title text. Maybe we want the title text to be white and then it would be good to have our body copy body text as white as well. So all I've really done is customize the the icons and the, the font colors in the background so that if you wanted it to have this sort of dark look to it, you could do that. You've also got border colors that you can adjust and you could also round the corners if you wanted to as well. So if we wanted to put maybe like a 10 pixel just to soften it up a bit you could definitely do that and then if you don't like that extra there's only a one pixel border on there right now so you could get rid of that as well and so now we've got a pretty customized look to our toggle section so how do we get these to sit side by side i'm going to save my toggle section first I actually just taught this technique in a video that I was able to be a guest on Daryl Wilson's channel. I will leave the link to those resources for you if you wanna check those out, but I'm gonna show you the technique that I use to get these to sit side by side. So in the row settings, if you click on the little gear icon and you travel to the column settings, so when you click on that little arrow, now we need to see that the settings are for the column. We need to add a couple of lines of CSS. So it's pretty simple. We'll go to the advanced tab and then we'll go to the custom CSS. And in the main element, I'm gonna paste three lines of CSS. So I'm just copying and pasting this. If you want to grab this code as well, just make sure that you check out the blog for this video. It will also be linked in the description so that you can grab these easily and use them for yourself. So let's paste this. So right now I've got display flex. I've got a line item center and justify content center. What this is doing is it's really centering them vertically, but they are right next to each other. So a couple of things that I might want to think about, let's hit the save button on that. And then again, for the row settings, I need to go back in and adjust on my text module. I'll go to the design tab and then spacing. If I don't want them to be right next to each other, then I need to add a little bit of padding to the right. So I might add a few pixels. Let's go with 10 to make it feel comfortable. And then you can see when it's closed, it's a lot smaller. So I'm gonna hit save on that. 
there's a couple more adjustments that I want to make to the spacing of everything. So I can see that there's quite a bit of padding on this row and I don't really love that. So when I start to stack these on top of one another, because all I'm going to be doing is just duplicating this row once I have all my settings the way that I want them to, I just know that there's going to be too much space in between. So let's go back and fix that. We'll go into the design tab of our row settings. We'll go to spacing. I might just try and do two pixels for top and bottom. That'll reduce that quite a bit. And then I'm not loving how short this is. I might increase the width of this toggle section just a bit more so that we can get it to behave the way that we want it to. We'll go to the design tab. We'll go to sizing and then with our width, now you can see by adjusting it to 95 instead of the auto setting that it was on, it's a lot bigger. Up to you. We could just even do 100% for as much as it will go. And so we've got our button next to it. And then let's just take a quick look at see if there's any changes. So this is looking pretty good to me. Other things that you could do, if you thought there was too much padding in the toggle area, you could decrease that just a little bit. But once you have everything set, it's really as easy as just duplicating and checking to see how much space is in between. I still think that there might be a little bit too much space. So let's try and reduce that as much as we can. Let's go into our toggle section here and make sure that there's no extra spacing. So if I want margins, let's try zero, see if that makes any difference. This padding is really for how much space is for that title track. So I might bump that up to 15, that looks pretty good. So there's currently some extra spacing going on and it's not quite apparent of, as to what is going on, but there is a quick solution for it. So in order to really get this to be condensed down, it's kind of a weird step, but you do have to go into the row settings and then in the design tab, you click the sizing, use custom gutter width and move the gutter width down to one. That will really condense the extra space. There's some just extra default padding that gets added for whatever reason when you start to stack the elements using display flex. So if you really want to get it condensed down, that is what you need to make sure that you do. Now you can hit save there. The, the button doesn't exactly look centered, but I am going to be replacing that button. So before I really get into the weeds of styling what that looks like, I at least just want to show you what this looks like now when we start to stack these on top of each other. So we did all the work of getting it the way that we wanted it to look. So let's just duplicate this and then we'll just do a couple here. As the buttons load, you can start to see that we're creating this nice little playlist with all of our song information or audio information that we want to use. So if this all looks good, let's style those buttons just a little bit. So the thing about the Compact W audio player is that these buttons are actually controlled with CSS. That means you could definitely create your own images and target the CSS. So I'm just going to copy and paste some code in the page settings, and then I'll walk you through what you need to change. Okay, I have copied my code. So what I'll do to paste this on this page, you could definitely put it in your main CSS settings wherever you have extra additional CSS. You don't have to put it on this page. I'm just showing this for the sake of making things easy. We'll click the page settings. You'll go to the advanced tab under custom CSS. We're gonna paste some of these classes. Now I've already got everything loaded in. So Basically, there's a my button play and there's a my button stop class. And in order to change size and image, the image is just really a background. So if you upload anything into your media gallery, all you have to do is grab that URL for your image and then place it into the background for the my play button. I also decided to increase the size of it because I thought it was a little small. So I went with 42 pixels. So you can change the width and the height to 42. 
Now, there's a, a very important missing line of CSS that if you don't put it in, your image is gonna look kind of crazy. So this one right here, the background size, that also needs to be set to 42 pixels. What, Whatever, and it doesn't have to be 42. If you wanted to do 50, whatever it is, just make sure that all three of these numbers are the same. So the width, the height, and the background size, and that will let you completely customize the image for the play button. You'll do the exact same thing with the stop button. So background size, width, height, just make sure that you enter the size that you want and then replace the background URL with the image of your choosing. By doing this, it will override the CSS of the plugin. And the good news is, is it shouldn't affect it. So if the plugin has an update and you're using the latest and greatest version, it should have no effect as long as they're not changing the way that they've coded this. Because as long as it stays CSS, you will have the ability to control the way it looks. So I'll just hit save on that. And you can already see that the buttons are looking the way that I want them to. So there's still a little bit of an alignment issue. I can try and see, let's take a look at, at the spacing. For whatever reason, there was 11 pixels at the top. So if we get rid of that, that's gonna make it in line. I don't know where that 11 pixels came from, but that's probably my bad. So just be aware that any positioning that you have, you do have the control by changing any kind of margins or padding so that you can get those to align the right way. I'm not gonna go through the rest of them, but this should give you a pretty good idea on how to create an audio playlist. My only concern with this would be analytics. I feel like you would want to know how many times your audio gets played. So you could probably set up a special event in Google Analytics to track these, but it's something to think about. If you are gonna use something like this, maybe you don't care about analytics, but I always feel like it's good to know what people are clicking on your site. So let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, always you can leave those in the comment section. And, and I wanna thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.